Well, let's get a focus on the recent big conference held in London called the Alliance for Responsible Citizenship. The goal of the ARC was to regroup and put forward a positive agenda by providing a better narrative than one of inevitable doom and decline. Described as a reaction to the left-wing socialist reforms being pushed by the World Economic Forum. Well, David Robertson is back with us today. He's known as the We Flee, his popular blog site. And uh, he's now pastoring a Presbyterian church at Hamilton in Newcastle, New South Wales. David Robertson, a special welcome back to 2020. It's a privilege to be back with you, Neil. David, the ARC, um, let's start with what sort of involvement you've observed about Christians involved in this movement. Yeah, it's very interesting, the ARC. um, People are very wary of it, suspicious of it. I would say generally in the mainstream media, it was hardly covered at all. Yet it was an extraordinary conference um, involving a significant number of politicians, artists, journalists, commentators. Um, I I was absolutely intrigued by it. In fact, when I looked at the list of people who were speaking, uh, I realized that I probably follow most of them or read most of them. So I was just gutted my personal invitation wasn't there (laughs) and and no one was willing to pay my airfare across to London. But you never know, there might be another one next year and uh, your name might be on the list, you never know. Well, I think they were planning doing an Aussie one, actually, as well. So, uh, but it was, it was, I would say to your listeners that it's well worth going onto YouTube or just onto the ARC website and just listening to the videos. They're like, a lot of the talks are 15 minutes, uh, thoroughly stimulating. You won't agree with everything. Some of the panels were absolutely excellent. Um, but there was very strong Christian involvement. For example, Oz Guinness was one of the main factors. Uh, John Anderson from Australia, uh, who's a well-known Christian here. Uh, Paul Marshall, who is a key factor in that, and I think he's the main funder uh, and head of GB News. Um, He's a believer as well, I understand. So there was a big Christian influence, although this was not a Christian conference. And uh, there was an emphasis on spirituality. Jordan Peterson, one of the main guys behind this, is uh, someone who's well known for teaching about the Bible and searching after God. And Jonathan Paggio, the, uh, the Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox philosopher, he spoke and he was absolutely brilliant. So there was phenomenal Christian influence, but it wasn't a Christian conference. And this is an important element just to pick up on here. Uh, it's not billed as a Christian conference, but you've got a lot of Christian input. And in some sense here, if you're going to be an influence as a Christian, uh, in a lot of ways, you've got to be able to open up uh, the uh, the vista of possibilities of talking about things, uh, even though it might not be specifically Christian, but it's got to come around some sort of things that actually we might even understand in a deeper sense, having an undergirding of Christian foundations. Is Is that the way you might observe something like this ARC? Oh, absolutely. Now, I think I ought to be, be wary as well that there are people who, who just say, oh, this is a bunch of, you know, right-wing people. And that's not true. I think right and left-wing uh, terms are pretty meaningless in today's politics. I would certainly say it was socially conservative as opposed to the progressive. Uh, that certainly binds more well with the biblical line But yes, I do think being salt and light means you have to be involved with people who are not Christians. And that's what this was about. Interesting when you say, um, you know, is it left or right? I think it was billed as sort of centre-right, which is Mm -hmm. not necessarily centre-left or any sort of extreme there. But another way of characterising that might be around uh, one report suggesting the conference would replace a sense of division and drift within conservatism and Western society at large with some renewed cohesion and purpose. So there's a way to look at it that says uh, regrouping around a conservative agenda. Would that be a way of, of looking at it? Yeah, I, I'm, I have to say, though, I'm not over fond of the word conservative. Uh, you know, maybe it's my socialist background. but um, <laughs> it, it, No, it, it's look, I, I would regard myself as a Christian as a radical. 
So it depends. When you say conservative, it depends what you're trying to conserve. If you're talking about conserving the family, if you're talking about conserving what's good, if you're talking about being salt and light, then yes, I'm a conservative. But if you're talking about turning the world upside down, as as the early disciples did, if you're talking about changing the unjust structures uh, and the iniquities within our culture, then then I'm a radical. So ironically, I think I think we're both radical and conservative. I I what what I saw in this conference was tremendous hope. I think particularly for the West in uh, a possibility of returning to our Christian roots. That that's as far as I would go. So where you've got Christian involvement in the conference, uh, a return to Christian roots, uh, that would indicate that we've lost an anchor. Uh, Western civilization has, you know, uh, been separated from those Christian roots in some sense, and something like this creates opportunity to re-establish some of those foundations. Yes. So I think that what's happening with the um, so-called progressive movement, I think it's not progressive, I think it's regressive, and I think they know how to destroy, they know how to deconstruct, they know how to knock down, but they don't know what to put in its place. And it's chaos. I mean, we're seeing chaos in the world right now in lots of different ways. Um, who would ever have thought, you know, one of the things in the Netherlands, uh, Gert Wilders winning the election there, it's astonishing. Um, the new Argentinian president, who's a tantric sex advisor, you know, Donald Trump, a reality TV show in, in, in the, the, the US. And this is people reacting against the kind of woke agenda, but they, they, they're all confused. They don't know where to go. And so for me, having an organization which wasn't just about, or a conference which wasn't just about one issue, but included economics, politics, art, music, um, society, education, uh, family, big emphasis on family, which I really, really liked. So, yeah, I, 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 I was very, very, very encouraged by it and very stimulated by a lot of it. And uh, they brought focus on uh, issues around capitalism and education. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts around uh, some of the things that were presented and some of the panels that you've seen, some of the commentary that's come from it, around those big issues? Because uh, obviously those are, are key when it comes to uh, how you know societies develop and how societies flourish. Uh, thoughts from you on that? Yeah, I, I thought the analysis was superb. Um, there were some things that surprised me. I expected to be stimulated and buy and enjoy John Peterson. I loved Oz, Oz Guinness, John Anderson, uh, and Peterson, and uh, discussing Ian Hersonali, who started off as a Muslim, became an atheist, is married to the, the well-known professor Neil Ferguson, uh, writer and historian and commentator. Uh, she basically announced at the conference she'd become a Christian, which was quite remarkable, and her statement was carried by several uh, magazines and newspapers. But I think maybe two things that stood out for me, and you know, I know we don't have much time, um, but uh, if anyone's interested, I did do a podcast on it a couple of weeks ago on the ARC. But one was Paul Marshall, who is himself a hedge fund manager and a very wealthy guy. His critique of capitalism, which I thought was wonderful, he critiqued crony capitalism and woke capitalism and state capitalism. And then the other was... Uh, a woman called Erica, let me see, what was her name? I'm just looking at it. Commissar on Raising Children. That was astonishingly brilliant. It was so worth it. Um, one of the things she did, and they had Jonathan Haidt as well, the American psychologist, and he basically said, uh, listen, don't give your children iPhones, smartphones, before they're 14. And personally, he said, I wouldn't give them until they were 18. And that just got such a huge round of applause, and he explained why. And it was just wonderful to to hear such common sense, uh, not ranting and raving, not overt politi politicization, but just looking at such a wide range. So there were many things in there, and you and I, we could choose each of the talks and do a couple of shows on each one if we... <laughs> there was so much. Uh, so many institutions that we might argue have some, some firm Christian foundations uh, described as being on shaky ground, uh, depleted social institutions, just like 
And uh, one of the notes that I picked up on some notes, uh, you know, such as the Christian church. Uh, How do you feel about the Christian church being described as a depleted social institution? And uh, obviously they're looking for solutions when they get together for a conference like that. Uh, But just to hear this sort of commentary coming around the Christian church, and undoubtedly some will say, well, my church is flourishing. Others say, my church is failing. Uh, What are your thoughts here for the thought of the church as a depleted social institution? Well, I I think you, you... You hinted there, and I think it's right to say it's, it's, you know, be very, very careful about generalizations. However, in general, and I will make a generalization now, I think that's an accurate description. I think you far too often get the church in general reflecting the culture rather, rather than challenging it or leading it. And for me, it was a little bit embarrassing at one level that, I mean, this is the kind of conference I think the church should be having. Um, And I'm glad that, in a sense, the church did, because there were many Christians involved. But I I think that description is absolutely correct. I think, um, what was it? uh, Was it G.K. Chesterton who said, he who marries the spirit of the age becomes a widower in the next? You know, and I think that's what we've done. We've become irrelevant because we've just become an echo of the... The, pre- the predominant culture, which is, I would call it woke, other people m- might call it different things, but basically the progressive woke culture, we've just become an echo of that. And, and that means that we've become irrelevant both to that culture, but also to those people who have been left out by that culture and who don't like it. And I, I think the church needs to go a different route. And that's interesting because uh, that means something radical. And, and you know, we might be thinking of, oh, what our church denominational leaders might be thinking about that. But, uh, you know, today, listening to our conversation, it's the grassroots. It's uh, people yeah. who are not the leaders. But when you say that, you know, there's just a, the church has become an echo of the woke, somehow or other that needs some sort of radical reaction. So the radical in you, uh, then uh, David Robertson, um, where, do you, where do you start with you know, ordinary uh, grassroots Christian believers who want to see the best uh, looking at all of these things? They might be looking at the World Economic Forum, then all of a sudden there's an ARC and they're discussing all of the challenges that are going on. What about the grassroots? What about the person listening to our conversation today? What sort of radical reforms necessary do you think in our lives? Well, okay, at, at, diff- at different levels. Firstly, at a personal level, the closer we get to Christ, the more we will be salt and light. So a uh, growth in our own personal faith and holiness and so on. Secondly, our churches need to be much more radical communities um, uh, and not just social clubs uh, where we have a prophetic ministry of proclaiming the word of God, but also living it. And then thirdly, the, the salt and light for me. So let's say, for example, in schools, don't let your school teach, you know, queer theory and stuff to your kids. Challenge them on that. that you, they're not supposed to be doing that. In your workplace, you don't have to wear, go in wearing a, you know, a, a Jesus T-shirt or something. But you can stand up for Christian values in a respectful and, I would say, tolerant way and and ask for some kind of tolerance. And I think there's going to be a pushback. So take, for example, the question of the smartphone. There's a very interesting statistic, and I do want to share this with your listeners. Jonathan Haidt said that if you were a uh, male teenager uh, now and you were religious, as he put it, your mental health would not have deteriorated much in the past 10 years. He's talking on average between different teenagers. If you were female, it might have deteriorated a bit. Uh, No, sorry. Uh, If you were female and non-religious, he said your mental health was catastrophically worse. In other words, progressive teenagers people who've been taught this stuff it's it it is demonstrably doing them a huge amount of psychological harm whereas religious if you're a teenage girl who is inverted commas religious then you're likely to be at the same level you were 10 years ago and i thought that was hugely significant and that's where normal christians he said we can push back on this stuff in in lots of different things and it just says it just takes ordinary people to stand up and that's what we need to do 
And as Christians, we know there are some certain tools in our tool shed that help us to be able to grapple with these things and find a good foundation to stand on. Interesting, as you mentioned, I and Hersey Alley and uh, coming out as a Christian during the ARC. Another one who's come out as a Christian of more recent times too, of course, Jordan Peterson and uh, has been much more closely aligned with a Christian biblical view of faith. Um, His topic was heaven and hell. You've got people who have been international public intellectuals like Jordan Peterson, and they are settling into a very comfortable space that says this is true and real Christianity uh, and his presentation on heaven and hell. What are your thoughts around the fact that there are public intellectuals who are not going on the woke agenda, but actually rediscovering something of the foundations of Christian faith? Well, Tom Holland is another example, the historian, um, uh, and uh, and he and Dominic Sandberg do the Rest is History podcast, which is one of the most popular podcasts in the whole world. So, um, and they were in Sydney, and I was there at Inmore Theatre in Sydney last week. It was absolutely packed out, which is incredible. Two guys talking about history, you know, who, who. <laughs> but he again, he again emphasizes Christianity. Uh, Jordan Peterson, I, I do have to say his particular talk, I think he's not quite there yet. I think he's he's much closer. He is, certainly has a belief in God now. Um, but in that talk, he did talk about us making heaven and hell. And uh, I, I don't, I basically don't think we have the power to make heaven, you know, so he needs a better grasp of who Christ is. But nonetheless, uh, Jordan Peterson, the fact that Jordan Peterson is holding in-depth discussions on what the book of Exodus means is astonishing, you know, with, with audience figures that you and I can only dream of, Neil. Amazing stuff. Uh, David, we have run out of time, and I do want to point listeners to your blog site. It's called theweflee.com, theweflee.com, and uh, you've got podcasts, you've got uh, articles. In fact, you're well known, David, for writing newspaper articles, magazine articles. Uh, you've written a number of book in, books, including The Dawkins Letters and Engaging with Atheists. Your latest book is called Seek. So for listeners to connect with David Robertson, theweflee.com. Com. David, always great getting your insights. Thanks so much for sharing those again with us today on 2020. Great to be with you. 